All right, my watch says it is 11. So welcome everyone to Art Starts Explorers, our province at play. This is uh, Kay Slater coming to you uh, with part two of our exploration on alphabets. Uh, I want to start our session by both saying hello and by saying um, that we welcome you to make comments and ask questions throughout this workshop. And joining me today is my coworker and the uh, program manager at Art Starts, Leah Horlick. She will be managing the chat channel. So if you have any questions as I go along, please feel free to share pictures of what you're working on, ask questions, leave comments. Um, because the camera is pointed down on what I'm doing, I'm usually focused on my own explorations. And so I'm not always the fastest to respond, but that's why Leah has um, given us her time and she'll be there to answer any questions. So um, I'm gonna get started. As I said, this is part two of Alphabets. I really enjoyed last week's session. Um, and lucky for me, uh, I work as a graphic designer amongst the other uh, ways that I am an artist, so I am a multi, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. So that means I practice art making in lots of different ways, whether it's graphic design, whether it's illustration, so drawing pictures that go along with other uh, works, so like text or in storybooks or for uh, uh, websites. Um, I also build things. Um, I also work as a sculptor. So I do a lot of different kinds of art. But one of the ways that I practice my art making is as a graphic designer. And I have to use the alphabet pretty regularly when I am designing um, things that have text, things that have writing. So I have lots of different ideas when it comes to exploring alphabets and I'm excited to share, you, uh, share this with you for part two. Before we get uh, right into it, as always, I like to take a moment of breath to make sure that we look at the three rules of explorers. Here, I'm gonna take that away because we have started, it is 11. So the three rules of explorers, and these are rules just to, to keep us focused while we're exploring because we can go in so many different directions when we open up our brains and allow for creative thinking, creative practice, and creative exploration. So this just kind of keeps us on the path together. And so the first rule of explorers is respect. And so uh, what do we mean when, uh, when I say respect? Um, maybe, maybe you have different ways of practicing respect. And if you are working and making with your family, friends, neighbors, classmates today, um, I encourage you to talk with each other about what respect means because it might mean something different to everybody in the room. But when I say respect, I mean uh, respect ourselves. So that's uh, maybe taking a second to check in with ourselves. Do we have a good morning? Do we have a good breakfast? Did we get a chance to pet our cats or our dogs or uh, play with our rats or feed our fish this morning? What, whatever it is. Or maybe you woke up in a bad mood or maybe you got some bad news this morning. Um, whatever it is, you need to take that moment and go, this is how I'm feeling today. And that's a real thing. That's, that's not something you can always change. And being aware of that before you start making your art can be really helpful with each other. So once we've talked to ourselves, talk to each other. Maybe we had a great morning, but the other person, um, grandma woke up and she's not feeling so great. Maybe uh, your cousin woke up and they stubbed their toe before they even sat down to make with you. Um, and their headspace just isn't the same as yours. So we want to respect that they're in a different place. We want to respect our tools. So if we're using something um, in a way that it wasn't necessarily intended, uh, we can practice respect by just being safe. So if we're using a pair of scissors that normally we would cut away from ourselves being really safe, but we wanted to use the scissors to trace them or to use the eyes of the scissors to look through them, we want to respect those tools and acknowledge that, you know, it's sharp, so we don't want to run with those. Or if somebody else wanted to use the same scissors that we're using, we uh, we ask them or we let them tell us if they want to use the scissors as well, and then we share. That's another way of practicing respect. And then I've also listed that I want us to respect the land. So I'm coming to you today. I'm hosting my session from my studio, which is on the unceded and stolen ancestral land of the Coast Salish people. And it's in particular, I want to name the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish people 
Um, and so when I am doing these workshops, I want to really try and be a respectful guest because it's due to their deep generosity that I can be here with you today and share this learning. So that's another way that we can practice respect by acknowledging the land and the people. The next rule of explorers is that nothing is for keeps. So everything that we make today, everything, all the things, even if it turns out really beautiful, better than you expected, everything that we're making today, we're gonna try and take it apart and we're gonna put it away when we're finished. So whether that means a drawing that came together really, really well, I'm going to encourage you to rip it up or to crumple it or to put it in the recycling bin. And that can be really hard. That can be really hard, especially after you've finished something that turned out really great. So that's why at the beginning, I like to tell you, try not to make something perfect and finish. We're, we're really trying today to not make something perfect. We're trying to try things that we would never try before when we were trying to do a finished project. Um, so that's why I always encourage us to take things from the recycling bin. You can find so many cool things that people get rid of. Um, so this is from an envelope. Uh, actually, this is from packaging. Sorry, I have another uh, window from an envelope. But this is from some packaging where there, there was the clear at the beginning so you could see it and I just tore away all the paper and now I've got this great piece of plastic that I can use for my art making today. But when we're all finished, I can put this back in the recycling bin um, because we're just trying things today. So nothing is for keeps. And then the last one is no expectations. So no expectations comes into that where if, we, if we're planning for things to be really good, we can be really stressed out when they either don't turn out really good or when they turn out really good and then somebody tells us we can't keep them. So today what we're doing is, is we're just trying things out. Nothing is for keeps. We don't have any plans to make something good or finished. And you know what? I always say that we're trying to learn by asking questions, but you might get to the end of the art making session and you might not have learned anything new. And that's okay as well. One of the things that you can do then is you can look back and you can think about all of those things or you could ask questions. Ask the other people who are making with you or re-watch this video with somebody who didn't make with you today and ask them questions because they might come up with something while they're making um, and they can tell you about their process and then you'll learn something by, by them trying these things out. So there are so many different ways that we can be exploring together. So these are the three rules that I like to keep in mind. Um, while we are exploring together for Art Stars Explorers. I'm gonna put these stickies over to the side because they're always with us. They're always a part of this, but we don't need them in the main area. And I'm gonna get started with part two of alphabets. So last week we explored texture where we used alphabet um, or letters in the alphabet to uh, make texture in an image. We uh, explored ciphers and codes. So we made up our own code or we made up a letter to number code um, and then we use letters as ready-made so as objects um, when we write the letters and then we can make things out of those letters and that video is available online both on Facebook and YouTube as well as we have now uh, we now have a directory of all of our videos at artstarts.com slash explores dash online so today with all of that already explored for alphabets, what are we going to explore today? Well, at the beginning of this video, I talked about that word uh, graphic designer and um, how I use letters when I am doing work. And there's a big word that you might hear uh, people say, and that word is typography, typography. Um, and so what that is, is that is, um, that's the practice, that's, that's the, um, the, the making of letters. And so it's, it's, a, it's a huge topic, it's, it's, it's really big. So basically uh, when you are writing letters, when you are using letters on the computer as a font, um, when you see, when you can read them in a, a newspaper or on a poster that they look different, when you're reading your comics and the letters are different shapes, whether they're hand drawn or whether a computer has drawn them in wacky styles, um, all of that is the practice of typography. That's uh, looking at those different styles of letters and then matching those different styles of letters to convey uh, an idea or emotion. So I'm gonna put this to the side because um, it's, it's a word that is important when we are exploring um, the letters in an alphabet, um, especially when we're looking at different letters. So if you have something nearby, 
that has some letters on it. And I have this art set here. I don't even know where I got this, but I saw this and I saw the letters on here and I really liked how they had that kind of bubble round shape to it. So for this part of the Explorer, we're gonna do some deep looking. Um, if you have multiple things that you found that have some letters on it, so I found a game book here and I found a um, instruction manual to my copy machine. And so check out these letters. These are all letters, right? And can you find, can you find the letters that are uncommon? So if I was gonna look at this, I would say, okay, there's an S and there's a small S on, on clubs here. I don't know if that's close enough. Um, at the end of programs, services, products. So I have that small S. I have a small s here and then I have the small s here and each one of them looks so very different um, and I'm going to start by by drawing them. So if you took uh, the, the tracing workshop or if you have a piece of paper that is uh, light enough that you can actually put it on top of the object and trace it which is just you know transfer the, um, the letter as it is on the page um, through the paper then I encourage you to do that. If it's something that is thin enough that you could take up to a window, or if you have a light box that you could take so that you can, you can trace it, then go for it. If you can't trace it, that's okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna practice looking at something. We're gonna look real close. Here, I'm gonna take another piece of paper. Actually, I don't, I don't care. There's, for, for you though at home, if you're gonna be tracing something, especially with markers, um, if you're doing it you might want to make sure that you do have a second piece of paper uh, so that it doesn't bleed through, which just makes it harder to, to uh, trace. So if you're not tracing, but you're using a marker, and you don't want it to go through on another page, and I'm just doing it for space here so that everything's really contained, um, then make sure you get an, another piece of paper underneath so it doesn't bleed. So I'm gonna look at this S real close, and because I'm not tracing and because it's so small, I really have to look at it. So while I'm looking really closely, at my S here, try looking around your house or your classroom or your church or your community center or wherever you're watching this video and really look at a letter, any letter, and see all the different things you can notice about it. So I'm gonna stop talking for a second and I'm gonna show you with my marker all the things I notice about this S. Okay, so that's my version of the S. It's not 100% perfect because I didn't trace it and that's okay, we're not aiming for perfect. But you might have noticed that I went really slowly and I, and I started, I didn't even draw the full S, I just drew the, the kind of shape of it just so that I could, um, that it could be the skeleton, the backbone, the base of whatever I was drawing. Because I was really interested, I mean, I noticed right away that it was really, really thick here of this, the uh, stroke here, and that's what they call, uh, when you start studying typography, um, the diagonal parts of the letter, um, of these letter forms here is called a stroke. And so I noticed this stroke here was very, very thick, but I was more interested in the stress, which are these parts of the letter uh, where they go from um, thick to thin or when they change weight. Um, so the stress being different here and then as they went to their, um, it's called a terminal here. So when, when they end here, I was interested in the, the, um, the end pieces, right? And so those are called, well, they, they, have, a, they, have, a couple, <laughs> they have a couple of different words, but uh, this one is like a bracket. Um, so the bracket, because this is a serif, so the difference is, is that if I had just drawn a sans serif, this is a big word right now. Um, 
And you know what? I'm doing a lot of talking because I know about typography. If you just want to draw the letters that you see around you while I'm talking, I recommend that you do that. In fact, if you want to turn off the audio and you just want to find some different uh, letters that you find around your apartment or room or class that you're in right now, then do that because the actual practice of looking for letters and looking at the ways that they are different is really super important. But if you're interested in learning just a little bit more about um, the, the different parts of the letter, um, I'm gonna keep drawing on, I'm gonna keep talking a little bit longer. So this right here is a sans serif. It doesn't have any kind of, um, uh, it doesn't have any shelves or marks or um, uh, flourishes at the end of them. And so in typography, we call those brackets. Um, so it's, it's kind of plain, but that's great because it, it can be really easy to read, it can look really clean. Um, whereas this letter right here, it did have a bracket, that curved part of the serif um, that connected to the stroke. And I was really interested when I was drawing this, that this one right here kind of had, it kind of stopped here and had this like triangle piece. And then this up here, same thing, it had this flat edge here and then it went directly into the letter and then uh, it, it dropped down like that. And I, I thought that was really, that, that was more interesting even than where it had uh, gone into the stroke here. And I'm using two different colors here. I'm using the black and blue, and I don't know how clear that is through the video, but to really show the different parts that I noticed in the letter. And that was just one letter, all these things that I noticed. I didn't even get into this cool squir swirly bit. And I fell into this, this letter. Like this letter was so interesting that I didn't even get to this letter over here. And I am gonna get to that letter now. So I wanna get all three of them. Um, this one ended up being a little too skinny for me to use, because I think that this one, if you really looked at it close up, that it's, it has uh, more body, it's fatter, right? It's got uh, more weight to it. So um, I'm going to draw that one again over here. And it would be really easy for me to go, okay, well, if I'm just going to compare it to these other pieces here, I'm just going to make it really thick, right? Because that's all it is. And that would be fine. But I want to really do some deep looking. So here, I'm going to color that all in. I'm going to do some deep looking. If you really look at it, like really put your, like slow down, try and just focus on the one letter, you actually notice that there's like a little bit of extra weight at the end of the terminal of each of these letters. It's very, very small. You, you, barely, you wouldn't notice it in the eye. The eye looks like it's the same thickness all the way through it. If you really look at that S, I don't even know, I don't even know if I can draw it so that it's just, a little bit, but I'm going to try. And if it doesn't work the first time, right? Remember, we're just we're just trying. So you could just draw it again, right? And keep practicing. There you go. Actually, that turned out all right. So just a small amount of difference between between that one. And then I've got this curvy thing up here. So just the act of finding all the letters that you can find in your space, or not even all the letters, but like pick one letter in common. So uh, if you're not sure where to start, you could pick your favorite letter. You could pick the first letter of your name. You could pick your best friend's uh, first letter of, th of their name or maybe their last name. Maybe there's a letter that you don't, you, you're not very practiced at writing. There, there are letters that we don't use regularly uh, when we write, or at least more often, especially in English, right? Um, and so usually those are the, the letters at the end of the alphabet, right? Uh, we, don't, we don't see um, Z very often. Um, w is less common, X is less common. So these ones could be really fun to try and find in your house or classroom because they're not gonna come up as often. And so they're gonna, they're gonna really be a find, they're gonna be a catch, they're gonna be a treasure when you find them, when you uh, go on this alphabet letter hunt, right? Um, so just, just by finding three things that were close by, I was able to find three different S's, and these are so different, right? 
So this one I was talking about being sans serif, which doesn't have the serif, which is the brackets, um, the shoulders, those edges, um, those flourishes at the end of the letters. And then you have these swirly script types that are hand-drawn and um, are, uh, are very performative, very flowy. They've got a lot of emotion to them. And then you've got easy to read, thin sans serif types. So I've just picked the letter S and I'm gonna move these to the side because we've already got We've already got this cool thing from it. So now what I'm going to pull in is, is that if you've ever had the chance to use a computer, you probably have some familiarity with something called font. And so the difference between a typeface and a font, so a typeface is kind of like an alphabet actually. A typeface is a collection of characters. So um, right now, this is my handwriting, and so you could call this K typeface if you wanted to. This is my handwriting, and it's always very similar, and so you could call this my typeface. Um, but as far as a font, which is uh, spelled F-O-U-N-T, um, or F-O-N-T when you use it on the computer, that's the way that you use these letters to, uh, to create a typeface. So you're, you're picking a font, you pick Arial, you pick Helvetica uh, before you start typing on the computer and it changes the style, the physical look of the letters that you have on the page. And then there are other ways that you can change it. And so if you're, if you're using Facebook and you want to, um, actually I think Facebook doesn't have it, but if you were writing an email, let's say, um, or if you were writing a text message to somebody and you wanted to um, add some styling, you might add um, an italic. An italic is when the, the letters are on a slant, right? Or you might use extended, where there's a whole bunch of space or that the letters themselves get really wide. So there's a, there's a bunch of different things that you can choose when you're using that typeface. So what I want us to do now is take these letters that we found and see if we could apply our own version of these different styles to them. So this one right here for the S is um, what you would call Roman. And Roman, um, sometimes you'll also see book is what they describe it as, um, which is just the, the easy way to read the letter. It's the basic way without really any styling. It's the default. So could I make this letter on an angle? Could I make it italic just by looking at it, by guessing, without using my computer? Could I explore this letter on an angle? So I'm going to start, you see how I put this box around it? I'm going to take that box again. I'm going to make it a little wider down here. And because I want it to be on an angle, I'm going to, I'm going to actually draw a line through it. And then I'm going to extend my box over here. So now I have this new box, right? This rhomboid here shape. And so all that is, is that if you were learning in math, um, you've got your rectangle and then you slant it so that it's, um, so that it's slightly on an angle. Whoops, I did it wrong, right? It's still a rectangle, but it's angled on the side, right? And that's like a diamond, right? If you were gonna turn it to the side, it looks like a diamond. This is like a fat diamond, square diamond. And then that's the round boy. So I've taken a square and I put it on its side. And again, so this, this is, this can be really challenging. Just this part right here, finding the S's and then, or finding the letter that you have and just copying them over and over again. Um, and keep going. If this next part is too hard, like just keep drawing all the, the letters that you find or keep drawing the same letter, right? See if you notice something different. Does it change as you uh, continue to draw the letter yourself? And do you notice things that are different when you're drawing them with your hand? Try using different materials. Oops, oh, oops, that's fine, that's fine. Um, use one pen one time, use a crayon another time. Is it as easy to draw that letter using the different materials? And every time you do it, I guarantee you, you'll probably learn something different if you, if you slow down and you really look or you'll notice, okay, well this way, uh, this way is harder. If I start the letter um, by just doing a thin base, that's more difficult. Maybe next time I'll do um, a heavier uh, 
the heavier parts first. I'll start with the stroke at the center here and see how that works and then bring that over. And don't be afraid, like sometimes it's not gonna turn out. Like, and, and I like to challenge. If you're, if you're feeling really adventurous, you've got your art adventurer hat on or, or even if this is, seems really easy to you, try to do it badly. Try to make it not look like an S. Like try, try to do this so that it's, you're using all the same techniques you learned, but see, see if you can really make it difficult or make it not look like an S by still using the same thing. So I don't know, um, I'm gonna go real fast and see what that changes by doing it Oh, just in, there you go, just in really fast lines, right? And see what happens when you change how you made it. And that was just, this was all just with a Sharpie. Let's explore. And see, I've already come away from this. This is the cool thing about exploring is that you start taking one path and then you end up on a completely different path. I'm gonna do that same kind of staccato fast line again and see what I notice. It's definitely easier for me to make a straight line than it is to do a, a curved line when I do them like this. Right? It's still the S, but not quite the S. And then the pencil crayons kind of give it this, this feeling, this tension that the, the slow lines of the Sharpie didn't but it still kind of looks like that S there, right? So can you keep going? Can you take your crayons? What about if you do it so many times that you think you've got, you've got it down, you're an expert? What if you closed your eyes? What would it look like? You can't, you can't see here, I'll bring my face a little bit closer. I'm covering, I'm covering it with my hand. And I'm gonna try it again. What happens, and like this is probably better with a big piece of paper that you've got, um, but what happens when you close your eyes and those things that you had in your head before, right? That shoulder that I remember. Gosh, what if you go back and you color it again, right? How, how different is it gonna look? Okay, I remember it was really thick here. Oh, I pulled the pen off the pencil or the paper. Who knows what this is gonna look like? Okay, I'm gonna bring it over the corner again. Real thick. And look at it. Oh, wow, that was all right. Not bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of myself. It might not have worked though, right? You don't know until you try. That, that was a chance. I could have gone right off the page here. That's also something else, right? You wanna be, you wanna go slow when you close your eyes because you don't wanna accidentally end up um, drawing outside of the page that you did. But if you set it up and you go really slowly, you might surprise yourself. All right, so that was that one. I wanna try at least one, one of this here though, this path. So I'm gonna move away from this path. I'm gonna see if I can now do this letter but on an angle and it might just be you might go what k this is really easy it's just that this is the s that's straight up isn't it just you turn your hand to the side oh maybe not maybe that's actually harder and try that right don't do the box actually just draw the s and now try and draw an s that it is italic oh <coughs> excuse me i don't actually think i can do it and so I learned something today too. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my voice for a second while, I, ooh, while I'm coughing and see if I can get this italic to work. Okay, 
So I took that new that new shape there. Oh, I think I need some water. Here, I'm gonna let you look at this for just a second while I take a quick drink of water. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go, excuse me. <clears throat> okay. So we've got this italic here. And what I'm gonna do is I've, I've drawn all these boxes, I've drawn all these things around it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach behind me with my drawing gear and I'm gonna pull out an eraser. I'm gonna move this over there. And I'm gonna erase this box that I made. And if you can't, if you used a marker, that's okay as well. I'm just gonna see if this makes it any clearer. And this isn't actually erasing really well, so that's okay. Well, lesson learned. Now I learned that this kind of pencil crayon that I actually just recently bought doesn't erase, but I do kind of like how it's smudging. Yeah, I do like that. Oh, and the uh, eraser marks where the eraser um, crumbs are all purple. That's cool. Okay, that didn't really work, but that's all right. So you can see it's got some things in common, right? It's got the, um, it's got the bracket here the end here. Um, it's got that thick vertical stroke here, right? And then turn it over to its side and it's slanted. And this takes a lot of practice, right? This is when uh, when people are creating their own font, um, their own, sorry, their own typeface. And if you wanted to um, on your own, right? I was talking about how this was my K font here because this is my handwriting. Um, why not your own? Why not try and um, code your own handwriting? If there's a specific way, maybe for your A's, you always have a hat on top of your A's, or maybe your A's are always, always have a tail at the end of them, or maybe you have a little swirl that happens at the top of your A. Whatever it is, if that's that thing that you always do for yours, take a page and write your your letters the way that you write the alphabet and then you can call it your typeface right so i always write my a's like that b's like that b's 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 f's g's right and so you'll find that there are uh, there are things that <laughs> I said this last week. It's actually really hard to talk and then uh, write the the alphabet at the same time. Um, you'll see things about your handwriting that are different from other people, and you should do it with other people. Um, and then you can compare how you do it versus someone else. Ooh, that is really hard. <laughs> I think I challenged everybody last week. Try writing the alphabet while you're actually talking about something different. It can be really hard. Um, and then compare your your handwriting, your letters, your alphabet to somebody else and see what you can find that's different. Um, my my K's, my small K and my big K, they look exactly the same. They're, I mean, it's a little bit bigger, but they they always look exactly the same, the small and the big. Um, for my I's and my J's, I always, I always have a big loop on the top of them. Um, in fact, for my E's, I know that this is actually wrong because I almost always, uh, for my lowercase E's, do a big version of that. And so if you've, you've learned your letters and you're starting to have your own version of, um, of your handwriting, it can be really fun to write this down. It can also be really fun as if you keep a record of this. So if you are somebody who keeps a journal, and I recommend everybody tries to keep a journal, or even a sketchbook, as you're going along and learning um, and keeping a document of how you are learning these things, every once in a while, maybe once a year, maybe on your birthday, um, you should rewrite the alphabet so that you can see the changes over time because we're always influenced by the things around us. Every time we see um, new letters, they can influence how we, uh, how we change, how we, um, we write our, our letters. This was really cool. Maybe I see this one day or I see it every day on my way to school or every day on my way to work or every day on my way to the gym. I see this letter and eventually 
my S's end up, oh, that paper moved. My S's might end up having a swirl, right? And by marking that, I can see that maybe last year I always did my S's like that, but then all of a sudden I did them like that, and I can start thinking, huh, where did I learn that? Wait, why did I decide to start doing my S's like that? And that's something we always want to do in Explorers, right? We always want to ask ourselves, what happens if? Where did I learn this? I wonder when I started to do this thing, right? Always asking questions. What happens if? Um, and always ask yourself those questions, right? Why did I do that? Did I do that for no reason at all? Well, what happens if I do it for a reason? How does it change? Okay, so that was a lot of talking for uh, typography. This, this is a big, 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 big subject and really, if you just wanted to spend the rest of the hour looking for one letter around uh, your space and redrawing it, that would be, that could probably be the rest of your life of drawing. It's so, so many letters that you can find um, and you can learn. So I'm going to put this to the side. Um, the next one that I'm going to do is uh, alphabet where we kind of, we kind of disconnect our brains for a second. So if you have ever had a day where you can't focus um, maybe you have a test coming up in school, or you got some um, news that you're having a hard time with, or maybe just somebody made you really angry. You couldn't get your way, or somebody told you something. Maybe you made a mistake and you feel guilty about it. You need to try and work through that. The alphabet is this great thing that we learn and we kind of internalize so that we can all we can all write, right? So if we have the privilege of learning how to read and write, we know the alphabet. So the alphabet is kind of one of those great things that if we needed to calm down, it's kind of like counting to 10, only this time we're counting to 26 because there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So let's say I start really, really angry, and this is something I'm gonna turn my voice off for. I'm just gonna write out the alphabet. I'm not gonna pick my pen up. I'm just gonna write it all the way through. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not doing this for anybody else. Nobody else is going to see this. This is just a way for me to go through and try not to think about anything else but what I'm doing with my hand. Um, and it can be really hard sometimes like is a, if you wanted to sit down and draw, right? You have the feeling that you want to draw or you have the feeling that you want to sit down and do your homework or you have the feeling that you want to sit down and learn a new skill but you can't get focused. The alphabet is one of those great things that you could just go through. It exercises your wrist, it exercises your brain without having to really think about anything other than the alphabet. And you could do the same thing with numbers, right? Like I said, the, the one to 26, you could go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you might have heard somebody say, um, if you can't fall asleep at night, then um, uh, you can just count as high as you can and then eventually your brain will fall asleep. And all that is is that that's a repetition, right? That's something for you to be able to focus on. The alphabet is the same thing. The alphabet is really interesting though because like there's the big letters and the small letters. So you could do it, okay, how how angry am I? Or how how not tired am I? Or how excited am I? Or Oh, I have to wait for lunch. I'm waiting for lunch. I'm so hungry. How hungry am I? How many letters can I get through before lunch is served? And so this is, this is just a really great way of relaxing, of uh, practicing using your hand, of getting inspired, of warming up before you're going to uh, do a bunch of writing, a bunch of drawing, and just a way of getting focused. So again, I'm going to turn off my voice. I'm going to change the, um, the color of what I'm using, and I encourage you to do the same thing. You can also practice um, being angry or being happy or being hungry, right? We're just playing pretend and see how that changes the stroke of your alphabet. 
I kind of wrote those with the idea of being angry and rushed and having to go really fast. Well, what happens if we're kind of sleepy? How does the alphabet change? I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw my alphabet really kind of sleepy and relaxed, and then we can see how the angry letters look different from the sleepy letters. And try it, try it at home or in your classroom. Remember, it doesn't matter if we go it over, we're just trying this out. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be in one direction. even have to be right. You can make mistakes. That's okay. There we go. So I finished that section and I decided to pick up another one. I can already feel that my voice feels calmer. I started by handwriting right by making these really sharp edges and those didn't feel very sleepy they felt kind of abrupt and sharp and so i decided to start doing cursive because i felt like the flow was more dreamy was more sleepy it was more slow and relaxed and some letters i repeated i don't know if you saw but for my e i did e like three or four different times because it felt really good that felt like a sleepy motion I was learning as I was drawing that, that when I draw the letter E, that feels very relaxing to me. Right? E, E. And as I went along, there were some letters that flowed really easily, some letters that actually made me stop up, some letters I couldn't even finish, I was so relaxed and sleepy. My M, when I, when I did my M, I noticed that I started with my M, and then I kind of went like that. I couldn't even be bothered finishing the last part there. That's how sleepy and dreamy everything got. And so that can be a really fun exercise um, to pass the time, to get your anger out, to count down to something, to learn about how we can express emotion just by making a mark. And you know who does this really well are um, comic artists, right? The people who do the letters in comic books, they, they have to really think about how letters, um, how those different typefaces convey different kinds of emotion. And as we explore this with our own handwriting, we actually can learn. If we wanted to write a note to somebody and we wanted to convey that we felt sad um, or that we were upset, Maybe there's something about our letters that are actually saying something that we don't even know, that we don't even notice that we're saying while we write the letter, right? If I was to write, um, I love you, it probably wouldn't feel as great if I was to write, I love you. Somebody reading that might go, wow, do, do you, right? Because I did it in this, kind of 
fast, harsh way. I changed my voice. I wrote it in these sharp ways. But maybe you do. Maybe you do actually mean I love you. And so taking that time to actually look at your letters and go, okay, well, maybe this is just my warm up. Maybe I wasn't ready to write this yet. Because, you know, we, we want to be present. We want to be thinking about the things that we're writing down because words have power, right? When we say things, when we write them down, and it becomes really easy, especially on the, um, on the internet, where um, we can just type something, right? And we don't really have to think about what we're, we're writing, right? But when we, when we write, we have that opportunity to actually slow down and think about uh, what, we're, what we're doing, the, the things that we're saying. It kind of comes back to the alphabet that I was saying as well before, when you're trying to say something while you're doing something else. If you're thinking angry thoughts, but you're trying to write something that is heartfelt or meaningful or an apology or an I love you, um, then that can actually come across in your handwriting, right? And so maybe just thinking about the word that you wanna, you wanna write, being really present, not doing two things at once, can add something extra to what you wanted to say. I just, I was really feeling the word love here. And that's something else you can do when you explore, right? Um, just pick a word that feels really good to write and write it over and over again. See how it looks different. And it doesn't have to look different, right? This can also just be a way of relaxing and using our alphabet as a way of exercising, meditating, um, relaxing, thinking, being patient. There you go. There's a whole bunch of love for you. Thank you for being here today and for doing this part of the practice. So um, letters can be conveying emotion and they can be used as a warm up or as a cool down tool, right? Um, and next time you're reading comics, if you have a, a chance to read a comic, going in and seeing and, and actually looking when a character yells, right? When, when somebody is angry, how it's different, how it's written differently compared to somebody who maybe is in love. Let's draw that for a second. Let's make two faces. I'm gonna draw um, a portrait. I'm gonna draw a portrait being the side of somebody's face. So there's a, there's a mouth, there's a nose, Top of the face goes around. There we go. And there's their ear and there's their eye. And I'm going to do the same face over here. So the same thing. It was just a line like that. Then a little part for their lip. Then a nose. And where their forehead is going around. Oh, that was a big head that time. That's fine. And then an ear. And then an eye closed. Okay. So I've decided that this person over here is in love. And that this person over here is kind of sarcastic. Maybe they're grumpy. Maybe they're mean. Oh, I spelled that wrong. That's okay. Mean. Okay? And so the two faces are showing the exact same picture. They look almost the same. But their words, when they say it in the comics, is going to be different. Can you think of a way... And I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can, that you can make um, this person, what they're saying in their speech bubble, look different from this person who's saying something with love. Um, and I, what are they gonna say? I'm gonna say, really. So you know when somebody's asking uh, if you are for real, if you seriously mean that thing, if uh, they're just checking to, to see how earnest you are, how honest you're being. So somebody says, um, I'm going to buy you a puppy. And you go, really? So I'm going to, to use the word R-E-A-L-L-Y question mark. But I'm going to put it for both of these. Try, try it yourself. What, what can you, what do you think, um, how do you think it's going to look different when each of these people are saying it?
All right, so that was my try. So for this one right here, what I did was I made the, the letters really big, kind of long and drawn out because I want this to be read really. So you're not really sarcastic, or so you're being sarcastic. It's not really a question. This person is saying it long. They're saying it so long and so sarcastic that the, that the speech bubble has actually started to melt. It's slimy, really, is kind of what I'm trying to do. And I, when I'm drawing comics, I'm not sitting there with you or with the other person who's reading it, right? I can't tell them. I can't write underneath the panel, you should read this sarcastic. I have to be able to use my letters, to use my um, type in a style that makes that emotion um, come across, right? I have, to, I have to give you these clues of how you're going to read this word. So really is dripping here. For this one right here, the person who's in love, they want to say, really? Earnestly. I tried to make the letters really clear and really clean and really short because it really was a question. There wasn't anything else that they were putting behind it. There wasn't any sarcasm. There wasn't any meaning. It was an honest question. Really? Really, you're buying me a puppy? And then I added these little hearts around it because I also wanted to show that I was in love. Maybe my, um, my foster parent just said that they were going to get me a kitty and I want to show that I'm, I'm both in love with the, or sorry, this character, this character's foster parent has said that they're going to get a puppy. And so they want to show that they both love the person who has offered this, but also um, that they would love to have that puppy. And so I've got really, and then all those hearts there. So that was two ways, right? The faces look the same, but just the letters that I used were different. So here, I'm gonna put that under the emotion area here because that was something that we did uh, to explore emotion. Okay, so for, with the last five minutes of today's workshop, what I want us to do is I'm gonna put this over here. I'll bring it back out at the end, but just so that I have the space here, I'll put it right here. Uh, so I have the space to focus. I want us to look at something. Um, and if you are in grade school or if you have completed grade school, um, at least in, um, in public uh, school here in Canada, um, you probably have done something called an acrostic. And an acrostic is basically, um, it's a poem or it's some writing that you do where the word, a word is spelt out and then um, a sentence or a stanza or a part of the poem then goes from that word. And so I'm gonna show you what I mean here. Um, as everybody who has watched all the previous weeks know, I love cats. You may have heard earlier in the workshop, my cat went a little wild and was running around here, here with his bell. <laughs> so I love cats. So I'm gonna write C A T S. Well, you know what? I wanna take a moment to say, you know what? Uh, writing, writing is art making, right? So everything that I'm doing here has a very visual art. It has a art making. You might do this in art class. You might do this in uh, English class as an art project. And so the word art, 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 art gets put around there. And I just wanna take a moment to say that writing is art, right? It, it, it's a beautiful thing to be able to use our words to write our emotions down to, to be able to read, to be able to sign, to be able to communicate, that is a that's a beautiful thing worth exploring. And so if you wanna become um, a writer who, who writes everything from books to textbooks, to uh, movies and plays, to documentation, so how-to books of how people can learn, right? When you, when you write a how-to guide for somebody, um, you, you're passing on knowledge. And that's, a, that's a really beautiful and wonderful thing. So everything that I've done right here, we're exploring the alphabet in these letters as objects, as things to be looking at. But when you practice writing, when you practice poetry, 
um, that is that's art making as well, and that's worth exploring. That's that's a that's a really great thing to do. Um, and so I just wanted to bring that back in that uh, oftentimes when we when we talk about art, we separate art, uh, we separate dance, we separate theater, we separate writing from artists. And these are these are all artists. These are all kinds of art. Um, and you really can have art in so many different things. Um, so somebody doesn't just have to be an artist. I told you at the beginning uh, of this workshop that I am a multidisciplinary artist. So I refer to myself as an artist, but I do so many different things. Um, a, a plumber might not call themselves uh, an artist, but that doesn't mean that they're not listening to music while they do their work, or uh, maybe they're called on to design a, a washroom that is really beautiful and they have to use their eye and their knowledge for design and style to be able to pick those things. And so there's art in everything. And I just think it was really important. I, I felt, I mean, we just finished that section on exploring emotion. And sometimes when you're exploring art making, you might come up with an idea um, that feels kind of different and you want to share it with the people around you. And this is a good time to be able to uh, share your feelings and thoughts with your family, your guardians, your uh, classmates, your friends, uh, whoever you have the fortune of uh, working and exploring with today. And us as well, right? If you wanted to share an idea with us, don't forget, uh, we welcome you to post anything that you have permission uh, from your guardians to share with us what you're making, or even if you have an idea while we were making together that you want to share, um, Leah is in those comments and is ready to respond to, to your sharing. Okay, so I did a whole bunch of talking and now I only have three minutes left, but that's okay. So I've written down the word cats here, C-A-T-S. And so what I can do is I can either use this as the start of a sentence or as the start of um, just another word here. Um, and that basically what you're ending up being able to do is you're gonna be able to read both this way and this way. And that's only, so in English and French, which I can, uh, I can speak and write in, that whole reading down and reading left to right. But if you, uh, if you were able to write and read in another language, then you might actually start on the other side of the page, right? You might start left to right, um, or even left to right, up and down, right? So depending on what language you're using, and I'm using English um, with Roman, uh, the Roman alphabet, if you were with us last week, you know that this is, this is called the Roman alphabet. Um, that we use it in English and French and a whole bunch of other things, um, or a whole, sorry, a whole bunch of other languages. Um, but for, 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 for my explorer, and whatever word you choose, right, you don't have to do cats, you could do whatever you want. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pick words that I think are associated with cats, because that's kind of a theme, that's kind of the idea that I've put there. So I'm gonna go cuddly, And I'm gonna go active because that is certainly what my cat was today. I'm also going to say tough because if you've ever watched a cat jump from a whole bunch of steps or a really high cat, um, uh, cat tree down onto the ground, like it's nothing, they're super tough. And I'm gonna go sleepy because there's nothing cats do so good as take a nap. Okay, so you might come up to this, right, without all those arrows and without me saying it at the beginning, you might just go, oh, these are just a bunch of words, cuddly, active, tough, sleepy. But if we then have, once we have these words here, we look at each one of these letters, we can then go, okay, well, how can I make that C bigger and um, easier to look at or more noticeable, but still make it cuddly. So I'm gonna add these kind of fluffy, pillowy lines. So now I've got a cuddly C. Okay, active. I'm gonna make my A, which I'm gonna make my A be kind of slanted, like for the uh, italics, because for active, we kind of run you know what, I'm gonna take those letters, I'm gonna take that arrow there and I'm gonna turn it into zoom. Like the A is actually moving across the page. 
Okay, for tough, I'm gonna turn this into two arms here as if they were uh, flexing. Still, oh, whoops, that's right. There you go, <laughs> there's my tough. <laughs> then for sleepy, uh, for sleepy, I'm gonna put, um, oh gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna do for sleepy. How about, how about I make it into a pillow? There we go. I'm gonna put a pillow around my S. There we go. And there you go. So now all of a sudden the letters C-A-T-S, they're more visible that that's a word by itself just by drawing and making those letters more um, active on their own, more of an object that people can look at. And then it's both a poem about cats um, and it's also a, uh, sorry, it's, um, it's a, sorry, it's a poem about, about cats, but it also allows people to be able to see it clearly that you want them to read it this way and this way. And so what this kind of, um, poetry is called, this is an acrostic, right? That was the word that I used at the beginning. Um, so, and as I said, if you, um, are in the public school system here, you'll probably get the chance to try and do this, um, a few times in school because this is one of those things that uh, pop up quite often in English um, and French classes. Okay, well, that is 12 o'clock. I was delighted to explore with you again this week. Um, this was part two of Alphabets, so if this wasn't enough exploring for you, um, you can go back and you can re-watch last week's Explores where we also explored the alphabet. And this is just some, these are just a few ways that you can explore Alphabet. Um, you can explore each one of these different activities so many different ways just on their own, but then there are so many other different ways. And we would love to hear about your ideas. If you wanted to share those ideas, um, you can email us, you can um, leave a comment, um, and you can share this video with your friends because we appreciate that. So we'll have a new theme video dropping later in this week, and I will be back again next Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, as we explore a new theme together. I'm going to turn off my voice, but I'm going to leave the video feed running for another five minutes as I clean up, because as we know, we always want to clean up at the end of these workshops um, and put everything back into the recycling bin. But I also wanna leave the feed up so that if you do have any questions and you do want to uh, leave any comments, that Leah is still here until the end of the session um, and you can leave those comments there. Thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you next week.